OCN Broadcasting Hope in Ukraine and around the world. I'd like to begin with an opening prayer. O oh Lord our God, you master of all, lend your ear and hear us. We know your undefeatable love for your creation and your inexhaustible goodness. Hence, we throw ourselves into the ocean of your compassion and entreat you, turn not your face from us, nor cast us away from your countenance, nor hand us over to those who are so furiously attacking us. Look upon us with your compassionate eye. Show us how to rise above the visible and invisible enemies. Encompass us with your mighty right hand. Keep us under the protection of your wings. Fortify us with love for one another and grant us unshakable peace. Upon you alone we look, you alone we place our hope, and you we send up glory together with your Father, who is without beginning, your all holy good and life-giving spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Peace is in the absence of conflict, but the presence of Christ, my dear friends. Some of us are meeting for the first time, so let me introduce myself to you. My name is Father Christopher Metropolis. I am the executive director of the Orthodox Christian Network, better known as OCN, reaching close to one million faithful a month around the world. We are coming to you today to offer some hope and some solace during this difficult time in your lives. My grandparents came from Greece and from Turkey, places which have known tremendous strife, invasions, suffering, deprivation, and even starvation. We have some idea of what you are going through, what at times seem to be insurmountable odds. We understand that the world is presenting all of us with new moral changes. It is not our grandparents' world anymore but we cannot legislate or force people to believe as we do. We must live out our faith so that others will want to be like us. We are a free people with a free will to choose. And this is so true in Ukraine. But we have an ideal that is set before us to live as the image and likeness of God. That means love and caring for all people, regardless of who they are and even who they worship. There have been many things that we observe in the past several weeks in horror and disbelief at what is happening in Ukraine to you. We marvel at the courage of your leadership, of the average citizen who will not give up their freedom or country. Our heart goes out to the young and the old children fleeing by the hundreds of thousands from their homes with merely one suitcase. We've witnessed the priests and the faithful praying in bomb shelters and underground stations. Children separated from their parents with some walking hundreds of miles with merely the names written on their arm of their parents and a phone number. We've also witnessed mass graves, hundreds of people being buried because they need to be put to rest due to their huge numbers. We've also seen thousands waiting to board trains images of which we have never seen since the Second World War. Millions upon millions have been displaced. But my dear friends, there are more angels in the universe than the people being displaced, who have now wrapped their arms around each and every one of you, protecting us. So the question can be asked, what do we do? At OCN, we're going to be creating new programs offering faith over fear to Ukrainian people over the next few weeks and months. It is the least we can do. There are five ways that I wanna share with you that we can unite faith over fear. The first is to pray. It is our most powerful weapon. We can connect with one another in a community who prays. Two, we can keep learning. We can read the fathers of the church and Holy Scripture. Check back regularly and you'll see relevant updated content from our contributors. The first scriptural reference I want to reference is 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 12. We work hard with our own hands. We are cursed, we bless. When we are persecuted, we endure it. St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? 
in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 7. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in all of our distress and persecution, we were encouraged about you because of your faith. Number three, we'll be sending you more faith-based content to observe and find solace in. Number four, speak to your children. Create a safe place for conversation. Create a spot for your kids to talk about what makes them scared. Many times just speaking about it can dispel fear. Be honest, you yourself experience fear. Sometimes kids are reluctant to admit what makes them feel scared. There's nothing that breaks down walls better than humility. There's comfort in knowing other people, especially their mom and dad, also experience fear. Five, teach them. Prayer is the go-to when you are feeling fearful. Nothing brings a sense of peace and calm like talking to God. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verse 6. Read scripture together. One of the most significant ways to have peace of mind in today's rapidly changing situation is to read scripture. The scriptures have remained the same for 2,000 years. There's nothing that has remained that long that has had such a positive influence on the world than the word of God. So read on with confidence and conviction that God is with you and with your family. God's word is truth, and the truth is that God does not want us to carry fear in our hearts. He is longing for us to bring those fears to him, as he did when he spoke to the disciples when he walked on the water. But Jesus immediately said, take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Do not carry fear in your hearts. I'm very pleased to let you know that we've received a commitment to send 1,000 pocket crosses to you in Kiev. On them is inscribed the words, in this you shall conquer. I ask you to put that into your pocket and to hold it when there are times of fear and desperation. And God willing, we'll be sending more to you very, very soon. When I was in sixth grade, a tragic event happened here in the United States of America. It was the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Kennedy, bracing for the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962, said the following, the path we have chosen for all, the present is full of hazards, as all paths are, but it is the one most consistent with our character and courage as a nation and our communities around the world. The cost of freedom is always high, but Americans have paid it. And one path we shall never choose, that is the path of surrender or submission. Our goal is not victory over might, but vindication of the right. Not peace at the expense of freedom, but both peace and freedom here in this hemisphere. And we hope around the world, God willing, that goal will be achieved. So my dear friends, we hope you can feel our prayers and support. It is frankly our most powerful message to you. I'd like to close with a prayer and offer it to you. It's a Christian prayer for peace of our times. O oh God, author and giver of peace, in whose image and likeness each of us has been created with a human dignity worthy of respect on earth and destined for eternal glory. Listen to the cry that rises from every corner of this fragile earth, from our human family torn by violent conflict. To world leaders grant the wisdom to see beyond the boundaries of race, religion, and nation, to that common humanity that makes us all children and brothers and sisters to one another. To those who have taken up arms in anger or revenge, or even in the cause of justice, grant the grace of conversion to the path of peaceful dialogue and constructive collaboration. To the innocent who live in the shadow of war and terror, especially the frightened children, be a shelter and strength, their haven and hope. And to those who have already lost their lives as victims of human cruelty and chemical warfare, 
Open wide your arms and enfold them all in the embrace of your compassion, healing, and everlasting life. Grant this, O Lord. Amen.